Hi everybody, Sam Mewis here for the women's game. Last night we watched the U.S. beat Canada in the semifinal of W Gold Cup. The game went into PKs after both teams played to a 1-1 draw in regular time and then a 2-2 draw in extra time. Then an absolute bloodbath in PKs that saw Alyssa Nair save three penalty kicks and score one. Is your jaw dropped? In this video, we are going to talk about the unsafe conditions on the field last night, the amazing goals that we saw despite the pitch being so waterlogged, and the three things that we learned ahead of the W Gold Cup final on Sunday in San Diego. This game was unsafe. The field was so waterlogged, and I really couldn't believe that the match officials let the game continue. In the first 10 to 15 minutes, I think everybody was kind of laughing because we thought it was just going to have to end. It felt like a waste of time, especially for the players. And then as the game kept going, I actually started to feel really concerned for the players. They were put in a position to put their bodies at risk for injury. And that responsibility falls on CONCACAF, the tournament officials, even the federation officials who had an obligation to advocate for their players in these conditions. Who had the players' backs last night? I know that I'm harping on this and that we seemingly got through the game without a major injury, but it really pains me to see the players get put in this situation. They are not in a position to protect themselves. And if they do get hurt on an unsafe surface, that affects them and their life and their career. And to be frank, nobody is going to be bending over backwards to help them. What I saw last night was upsetting because the players were put at risk by incompetency and lack of consideration. So I'll get to the goals. In the first half, Jaden Shaw scored in the 20th minute for the U.S. when a Canadian defender tried to pass the ball back to her goalkeeper and it just stopped in the box due to the waterlogged field. I think there was a big lesson learned there that you got to kind of chip the ball so that it doesn't get stuck in the mud like that. So the game changed a little bit from there on out. After the U.S. was leading for much of the game, Canada then came back and scored in the 82nd minute off a really great header from Jordan Heidema, crossed from Ashley Lawrence. Our back line got a little bit pulled out of shape, lost track of runs in there, and it was really unfortunate to give up a goal this late in the game to send us into extra time. So we head into extra time, and Sophia Smith scores in the first period in the 99th minute. Rose Lavelle was able to flick on a header from kind of a 50-50 loose ball that Sonnet played forward towards the box. It was a really scrappy goal from Sonnet and from Rose and a great finish from Sophia Smith in a really big moment. In the dying seconds, Alyssa Nair came out to clear a ball and missed, fouling a Canadian player in the process. So the ref went to VAR and called a PK and Adriana Leone buried her penalty and sent us into actual penalty kicks. During those penalty kicks, Sophia Smith went up first and it was so amazing to see her bury her PK after she missed in the World Cup last summer. Lindsay Horan also buried her PK as usual, but the real story here is a listener. And that brings us to three things that we learned. One, we relearned that a listener is an absolute legend. She saved three PKs in the shootout. She also stepped up and scored her own PK, single-handedly responsible for the U.S. going through to the final. A listener, who could ever doubt this woman? This was such an incredible penalty kicks performance. So psyched for her. She's really, really proving herself as the veteran that she is and making a, a really strong case for herself that she belongs in goal for this team all the time. Two, all of the players on both teams showed so much grittiness and toughness. And I just wanted to show how much respect that I have for them for continuing to do their best despite these conditions and fight to win this game. Everybody who played last night put their bodies on the line despite not really being protected by the organizing bodies of the tournament. The mental focus that it takes to constantly second guess where the ball is going to be, coupled with the physical grind of sludging through water and mud, must have made this game exhausting for the players. Clearly somebody at CONCACAF made a bad decision, but the players deserve a lot of praise for just getting on with it and fighting. So much respect to the U.S. team and to the Canadian team for their commitment and desire to compete in this tournament. Three, the U.S. substitutes brought really great energy to this game. There is so much to be said for the players who started the game in those really tough conditions, and I do feel like the field got slightly less waterlogged as the game went on. So ultimately, it is kind of crazy to judge anyone's performance based on the field last night, good or bad. But for those substitutes to come on the field in a game like this and make a difference, Rose Lavelle was all over the place. She fought out for that gritty assist on Sophia Smith's goal in extra time, and she was a true difference maker. 
fighting for the ball on defense, making positive plays on offense, as was Emily Sonnet and Sophia Smith. Lynn Williams also came out and showed what she has to offer in a moment like this, nearly creating chances for herself in the mess that was the game. The U.S. has a lot of options for a starting 11 on Sunday, and all of these players, especially these substitutes, made cases for themselves to be included. I just want to shout out Canada one more time for their journey in this tournament. They deserved better conditions to showcase themselves last night. They're a great team, and I know they'll be back. The U.S. is going to take on Brazil on Sunday at 8.15 p.m. Eastern on Paramount Plus in the W Gold Cup Final. This is a tournament, so this is a final game, and it's so exciting we get to watch the U.S. in this under this kind of pressure. I am actually heading to San Diego to be at the game, so I hope to see some of you there. Make sure you check out some of our recent interviews. We have Sophia Smith and Crystal Dunn, and follow along on our social channels at Women's Game MIB. You can also subscribe to this YouTube channel for more content like this. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Sam Mewis, and this is the Women's Game.